thank you for having me. I'm Mary O'Halloran and I'm a dietitian um, and I mainly cover paediatrics so I'm delighted to be here today because this is my bread and butter. So I'm here today to discuss the food pyramid. So this is a new food pyramid as I was telling you, it changed there last year and the main change is that they've put fruit and vegetables on the bottom. Okay, so now we, the Department of Health wants us to eat more fruit and vegetables. And I just have some examples here of what a portion of fruit and vegetable is. So it's a norm, normal size orange, or if it was mandarin oranges, it would be two small mandarin oranges, an average size apple. How many of these do you think is a portion? Six. I'd say a handful. Yeah, a handful, six to ten. So that's about a portion of grapes, okay? So grapes are very, very good for you, but they are, there is sugar in grapes too. So that's why we would recommend you only eat the six to ten at a time, because it would be a high sugar fruit. And obviously then vegetables, that would be roughly a portion of vegetables. All that kind of veg there. So why do you think you need fruit and vegetables? What will they do for your unborn baby? I'd say they'd give you a healthy R level. Yeah, what else might they do? The growth. Yeah, they give you vitamins and minerals. So that's why they'd be very good for your blood and for the baby's blood, for the brain to develop and for all the baby's muscles and everything to develop, the baby needs vitamins. So the, the baby will get the vitamins from fruit and vegetables. So that leads us on to the next shelf then, which is the carbohydrate shelf. So that's usually the, the bread, cereals, potato, rice and pasta shelf. So I have a few examples here today. So Weetabix would be an example of a carbohydrate or a slice of bread. Or I have a brown roll here, I have a portion of rice. We recommend that you choose the browner variety. So I have white rice here today, but brown rice would be healthier. It would give you more fiber. So if you're constipated, which can sometimes happen when you're pregnant, it's really important that you eat a lot of fiber. So that'd be this type of food and choosing the browner breads, the brown rice and the brown pasta. Potatoes are in this group too. Okay, that leads us on to the dairy shelf. Why do you think dairy is important when you're having a baby? Our calcium and our bones. Yeah. And who else has calcium and bones? Baby. The babies. And the baby's teeth, is that? Okay? So it's really important that the mum takes in enough calcium for her bones and for the baby's bones. What would happen if the mum didn't have enough calcium in her diet when she was pregnant? Maybe I could take the calcium from the mother's bones. So the baby will never suffer, but the mother would. So the mother's bones would get really, really thin. And when that mum then is an older lady, she'd have really thin bones and she'd be at risk of what we call osteoporosis. So the baby will never suffer, but the mum will. Okay, do you know how many portions of dairy you need to take a day? About three a day. Three. A portion of dairy is an ounce of cheese, so roughly about that much cheese. Okay, a yogurt or a glass of milk. That'd be your dairy group. So try to have some dairy throughout the day. So maybe you'd have milk in your cereal. You'd be possibly having milk in your tea and your coffee. You might have a yogurt with your lunch or after your dinner and you might have cheese in a sandwich. And that would make sure that your bones get enough and that the baby's bones get enough. What else works with calcium? Have you heard of any magic vitamins that work with calcium? Vitamin D, is it? Yeah. Vitamin D. Where do you get vitamin D? From the sun, but then we don't have it in Ireland. Yeah. So what do you need to do then? You have to get a vitamin in the chemist and it's put through a supplement. Yeah, so you can go on a vitamin D tablet if you need to. So it's just to talk to your public health nurse or the doctor in the hospital and they'll advise you to perhaps go on vitamin D if you need to, if they feel you're not getting enough. Okay, that leads us on to the meat, poultry and fish shelf, eggs, beans and nuts. So this is our protein shelf and it says here two portions a day. So I have some examples here which would be like this, like a, a pork fillet or some meat. Beans would also be in this group, so if there's any vegetarians in the community, they would need to be eating beans and peas and lentils. Eggs would be in this group, so it would be important to cook the eggs without oil, so don't be frying eggs. Okay? And also nuts. So it recently changed, pregnant women can eat nuts. Okay? So it's really important to remember that. The old advice used to be pregnant women were not allowed to have nuts, but now they can. But Nuts appear on this shelf, but they also appear at the top of the food pyramid. Yeah. So it's to have them in small amounts. So maybe only eight or ten nuts mm -hmm. at a time, not to eat a whole big packet. So this shelf will give you protein. What would you need the protein for when you're pregnant? To help the baby's muscles develop. Okay. The muscles, their brain, their heart. It's how the baby will develop. So that's what you need protein for. That leads us on to the new, a new shelf in the food pyramid, and it's called fats, spreads, and oils. And I have some examples here, which would be like mayonnaise, 
cold slaw would be kind of fall into the shelf as well. Anything made with so like egg mayonnaise, potato salad, um, and then butter, pats of butter. So it says here in very small amounts. So we would be encouraging you to use small amounts of this shelf because this shelf only ever gives you fat. It doesn't really give you anything else. And if you overeat this type of food, you will put on weight. And we don't want the mother to put on too much weight because she's at risk of having a very big baby. Okay? And these don't really do add anything to your baby's health. They just put on weight on the mother. So to make sure you're using light mayonnaise, if you're buying mayonnaise, use the reduced fat or the, the low fat version. And we also would recommend using a low fat butter. Make sure you're using the spread. Okay? And that brings us to the top of the food pyramid. Foods and drinks high in fat, sugar and salt. And that's all of this stuff here. I brought a croissant with me today. A slice of cheesecake. A sausage roll, which is a big culprit. This lad is absolutely lethal. There's the same amount of fat in this sausage roll as there would be in a whole pizza. And sometimes we use these as snacks when we're in petrol stations. We might run in and get two or three sausage rolls and eat them when we're driving. You wouldn't eat two or three pizzas when you're driving, so therefore you shouldn't be eating two or three sausage rolls. So sausage rolls are very, very high in fat and they will affect your weight. I also have scones here. Scones appear at the top of the food pyramid, exceptionally high in fat, and then usually you add butter to them, so you'd be adding more fat again. What, <clears throat> what makes the scone so fattening? Because you're a piece of bread with raisins, there's fruit in it. There is fruit in it, mm -hmm. but it's how the scone is made. So when you're making a scone, you get, some really, uh, you get a lot of butter and you rub it into the flour to make the scone. So an awful lot of this goes into making the scone and then usually we add more butter again. And there's also a bit of sugar goes in, and sometimes you get scones with sugar sprinkled on top. So that's a, that's a really bad scone. Chocolate appears at the top of the food pyramid. Okay. Pizza. So that's a, a pizza is, is bad because it's on a bread base, so the bread is quite heavy. It's, it's a dough base. And then also it's loaded with cheese. And then sometimes there'd be fatty meat on it too, like pepperoni would be a, quite a fatty meat. So pizza definitely appears at the top of the food pyramid. And we would be advising you to have it in very small amounts and not often. Pregnant. Pregnant woman would be still following the same food pyramid. She would just have an extra emphasis here. She has to be really careful about her dairy shelf. Okay, she really needs to get the three to five a day of the dairy because of the growing baby inside her. She's making extra bones. So she's only increasing the calcium. Yeah. Yeah, pregnant women should also be on a folic acid tablet. Mm. Okay. And they should take iron tablets if they're prescribed iron tablets. The best drinks for pregnant women would be water and milk. Okay. Any questions? No, that's perfect. Thanks very much, Marie, for coming and sharing the information and the way you delivered it is, is it's lovely to see it. It's not being preached, it's being seen. So it was it's learning for me and it should be learning for the community. Okay, thank you.